and why the AZ is SVO Jokes aside, the realest when you hear it Coming from the Eric Bernard show is Scott still Very young, get your phone in, hear a call We going up, now let them know Welcome back to the Eric Bernal Show. Now, this episode is extra special. It's extra kinky. It's also extra cringy, to be honest with you. A lot of things have happened since the last episode that we've had. Um, and this will be on uh, actually a few weeks after we're recording this today, but that's fine. Tomorrow, we'll talk about this when I'm back. I'm actually going to be with the much talented Neil Nanda and also uh, Ralph Barbosa. Ralph Barbosa... Uh, Funny comic, but made headlines by uh, basically George Lopez saying that he ain't trying to look out for any other young Mexican people. And as a man that identifies as Mexican, but is also Ecuadorian, uh, I thought that was pretty interesting because he handled that pretty, pretty well. But it should be interesting. Obviously, next episode, we'll have all that and some more. But breaking news. <laughs> the Eric Bernal Show has their first sponsor, Gatsby. Do you know we have a sponsor? Yes, we have a sponsor. We now. have a sponsor officially, officially. And look, there's a lot of negotiations, a lot of back and forth, a lot of cock sucking <laughs> on my part. So it's all right. We have drum roll, please. If we can have like a drum roll, yeah, I got part. it. It is Becky's. What is it called? Seltzer. Seltzer. Just kidding. Becky's seltzer drink. Honestly, that's all I've been drinking to get. You know. Um, Molested these days, so that's what I drink. <laughs> Becky's has hit, has got on board. Uh, we've also denied some sponsors because we don't want to be affiliated with dumb shit. But uh, we believe in every sponsor that we do have that it's what we want to fuck with. This podcast will not be bought by anyone or anything or any regime, left, right, up, down. Don't give a fuck what you pronounce yourself or identify. This podcast is brought to you by Eric Bernal and Gatsby the Artist. Yes, Literally, sir. that is it. Shout out to Jack Ducey in the, right in the building real quick. But we will not be bought. If we don't fuck with you, we're not going to be part of you. Legitimately. If I don't care about your product or your business, I don't care to be part of it. With that being said, I could be bought on the side. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, enough money does talk. And what I've learned these days is that I can see how people get elected. But with Becky's, I just want to shout out Becky's. I want to shout out all the people uh, because uh, they purchased me at a right price. And uh, yeah, so look at that, people with podcasts, people in the Phoenix comedy world with podcasts who suck um, and also don't get paid and also just suck in general. So here's the thing. Keep it up. You'll stay local forever. Anyways, I've had a few Beckys tonight, is what I'm saying. I'll drink to that. We'll drink to that. Uh, I wish Beckys came with like a, their whole line of like Coke. Um, so here's the thing. We have our first sponsor. We're very happy about it. Ecstatic. Wonderful. But you guys care about that, I'm sure. And we're going to have fucking fun games about Beckys. Uh, to come. It's going to be dope. We'll invite fans. We'll have winners. We're going to take a fan out to dinner. That's something that I just made up right now. Um, and whether that dinner is at McDonald's or Maple, it's none of your business. We'll take you somewhere. We'll document it. We'll have Gatsby record it. We'll get you drunk. We'll have we'll do lines off your mom's ass. We'll do the whole thing is what I'm saying. It'll be a really good show. It'll be Look, honestly, at this point, whatever's content is content. If I have to fucking whatever, do anything for content, I will do it at this point. But Nonetheless, just got back with from Tim Dillon, the Tim Dillon Weekend. That might be the name of this episode. We don't know. But Tim Dillon, the amazing Tim Dillon. The, the, you think about a person and you go, how is that person like? He's exactly how you think he is. He's fucking hilarious. He's honestly a really cool blueprint to follow, but in, in his own words... You know, uh, not everything you're gonna not everything you're gonna see is what it seems, right? And uh, we flew into what was our first spot? We flew into Minneapolis, Minnesota, where, in the words of Tim Dillon, disgusting people. Okay, but the fans were awesome. They the fans drove from I swear to you one to three hours to That's come insane. to the show. That's how much 
whatever area that was at, it was a piece of shit. No, just kidding. Mystic Lake Casino, we thank you. We love you. It was an amazing time there. You guys took care of us. Your decor does need updating. Uh, but you guys did have porn on your TV. So that was good. It helped me get through the night. Nonetheless, it started off with me getting to the airport and Tim Dillon is waiting for me. That's crazy. Tim Dillon is an, is, is an enigma. He's an, he's an idol. Right? He's way taller than I thought he'd be. He's so fucking tall. So the guy tall. is like a lineman, uh, but a gay one. And that's, and that's a good, we want gay linemen uh, more in the NFL. If you guys can come out. Inclusion. You know, we know you guys are gay. Guys are sticking their hands under your butts and saying hut, hut. Um, so I get to the airport and um, shout out to Travis. Travis hits me up. He's like, hit me up when you land. I land. I find out that they're so fucking far away from the gate that I'm at. I asked this black man in a, in, a, in a golf cart thing, and I said, can you take me here? He goes, you have $10? I was like, you bet your fucking bottom dollar I do. Okay. They shook you I hop in this shit. We're blasting to people probably thinking, oh, maybe he's handicapped. No, I'm just lazy. And I just don't want to walk far. We get there. I'm shooting a video. I go, hey, you know, made it. You think, you know, sold out show here at Mystic Lake Casino, blah, blah. And I'm looking down at the phone and I'm seeing what filter to use. And literally, there's somebody going, and it's Tim Dillon, like, hurry the fuck up. <laughs> Get to us so we can get in the fucking car, right? And it was a nice car. I think it was like a Lincoln Navigator or an Escalade. One of those big cars, black, right? Nice cars. We get in. Uh, I take a captain seat. He takes a captain seat. And we just start chopping it up. We start talking. And he goes, yeah. He's like, I've been here before. And it was a great crowd, et cetera, et cetera. We get in through the back way because this is how artists and superstars travel. We get the back way, security comes out. They walk us. They give us our lanyards. It's like, I think at this point it's almost 6 p.m. Shows at 8. They, give, they bring us to our, our gr the green room. And then uh, Tim's like, yeah, we're not going to wait here. We're going to go to our rooms. So let's fucking hurry this shit up. So they give us our keys to the room. Uh, the lady, I think, gives me like $75 or $100 worth of like coupons and food, which I don't know what the fuck I'm going to buy with all that. Uh, but it doesn't work on alcohol. Right? <laughs> Whatever reason. Bro, so me and Tim are actually on the same level. His obviously the bigger suite. I got a nice little suite. Still, nonetheless, it's great. Um, but I got time to kill. I got time to kill. Yeah. So I go, all right, let me masturbate into this hand towel. And then, because that's the only way I'm going to be able to think straight. Otherwise, I'm over there with a loaded gun. You know what I mean? I want to empty the clip before I head out. Been there. We all been there. It's always better. Empty the clip. Guys, actually, this brings me to another idea. So I, I have been in relations and other relations. Empty the clip before you go out. You, your night ends up way better. You have fun. You're genuine. You're not swayed. Now understand why women fuck their men before they go out. It's genius, actually. You, you fucking empty the clip because then they can't kill any other bitch when they're out. It really is. Like, you can't kill, you know, you can't, you can't spray your loaded gun. Smart by women. I love that. And honestly, if and if you women are the type of like, no, he was mean to me today, so I was getting a pussy, that's why you deserve to get cheated on. So, nonetheless, Yikes. I'm a little drunk right now. Um, but all all true, all true. Any woman that fucks their man when they get when they get home late at night from hanging out and they still want to fuck, let me just tell you something. A guy who doesn't want to fuck is because they already got fucked. Okay, but if they call home ready to lay dick on you at 4 a.m. and you go, no, because the, the month, I don't know. You're fucking up. Okay, you need to be like these people from across the seas who just submit to their men and have sex with them whenever they want. Look, I don't actually a woman from Albania told me that I was 21 years old. And I remember she was like, I don't understand these American woman. I said, why? Her name was. I don't know if her last name was Dijambalik. That's all I know. Dijambalik was her last name. That's mad foreign. Oh, so the foreign bitch. FB. You know. <laughs> FB. She was a foreign bitch. So, but she told me, she goes, you want to know why these American women get cheated on? It's because they, they, they close off their, their sex as a punishment to their man. And guess what? As a woman, it's your duty she would say that to me. This is a woman talking, not me. I'm sexist, but, you know, like, you know what I mean? I'm a fucking piece of shit. But, no, she said this. And she said, 
That's why she goes, if my man comes home, I don't even care if I got the flu, bitch. I spread my legs for him because he came home to me. He's ready to fuck me. And I said, Mr. Jambalik, I need you to just finish this order with this lady. She wanted a love seat with a, with a chair. Okay? Because you know, I worked at a furniture company. And uh, she was like the girl that you ended up, you know, giving the thing. And she worked, you know, figured out a delivery time. But she would say stuff like that. Nonetheless, I met Mystic Lake Casino. I emptied a clip into a fucking hand towel. And I threw it in a corner, so I made sure not to use it for my face. Unless I want it to be cleaner. But, or like cleanse my face. I heard it's good. I don't know. I think girls just make it up because they're nasty. But, so, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm not staying in my room. I'm in fucking Minneapolis, Minnesota, baby. Yeah. Actually, it's called Prior Lake or Lake Prior. Prior Lake. I forget what it Prior is. Lake. One of the great lakes, right? But it's like, you know, it's Native American land. Yeah. Shout out to my Native American. So... <laughs> My Native Gatsby American. is a Native American. If you guys haven't uh, don't know this on the podcast, he is very American and very Native. Okay? That's true. Yeah, when it rains, he dances. So, um, or the opposite. When we need rain, he dances. I fucked that joke up. But so we go downstairs. I got these coupons. And I'm looking for free drinks. I'm wearing the Tim Dillon lanyard. You know what I'm saying? Some people are like, oh shit, how you get backstage? I'm like, actually, I'm a, I'm the opener, and I say that like that because I'm thinking. I say it like I don't care, but I want you to care. I want you to care. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> come on. Come on. I'm not an idiot. So, whatever. Oh, yeah. Peace sign. Eric Bernal Comedy. Follow me on Instagram. Blah, blah, blah. Punch my ex from fifth grade in the face, you know? So, I find this couple, and I see them ordering some food. And I see him, like, like looking at the prices. I go, I have these coupons in my pocket. You know? I'm about to make these people's day. I go behind them, and I, I can see him. Like, you know, it's something about a man who doesn't have many funds, but still looks to look out for their woman. I see, and I see her understanding at the same time going, baby, whatever you want to order, I'm going to be okay with. And I fucked with that girl. I saw the whole thing happening, the whole transaction. I love that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make y'all day, motherfucker. Because his shit was already coming up to like $38. Look, you bought Tim Dillon tickets. You drove out there. Maybe you got a room for the night. The shit's already expensive. We don't think about these things. Factor in the amount of hours that man had to work to afford to this point. you know. So I walk up and I say, hey, man, can you get me a Heineken? And he goes, what? <laughs> He goes, what? And I go, no, no. I said, look, I'm going to take care of the food. Honestly, there's no fucking way I'm going to purchase $75 worth of food. Plus, Timmy is going to take me out to dinner after the show. Yeah. So whatever. I give him the $50 worth. And he's like, he changed his whole order. He's like, yeah, let me get the wontons and uh, let me get the rice bowl. How much is it for large? Fuck it. Let's large it up. You know, and then I could see like it changed their whole feeling because I feel like as a woman, she felt like I know he doesn't have a lot on him and he needs to be, you know, strategical with his money. But I'm still loving the moment, which I I respect it big, Nothing big time. Respect. Something that 50 Cent once said, <laughs> and I will reference him a lot. 50 Cent, New York used to, shit. 50 Cent said that he, he never understood why his grandfather would hand his check over to his, uh, to his wife, right? To the grandmother. Um, and then he goes, then he found out why. He gave it to her so she knew this is how much we got. That's real. Pay all the bills so you can see with your own eyes what we have left. So you don't ask for the shit that we can't get. That's real. Real as shit ever. Shout out to Queens, Jamaica Queens. 50 Cent, shot nine times, still breathing. <laughs> Living proof there's a God if you need a reason. Um, I think I just combined Tupac and 50, but... There it is. Here's the thing. So they're like, oh, are they, you guys here for Tim Dillon show? They're like, yeah, oh my God, it's great. Cool. Paid him. I was like, can you give me the Heineken? It's the funniest part of the whole thing. I have... Literally now paid sixty dollars worth of food for that. They went nuts. Okay, they went nuts. Good on them. <laughs> the beers, the beers. <laughs> Ready for this? <laughs> the the guy could have really saved himself on this one. 
As they get the honey, it's a tall boy. It's big. You know, it's like, oh, it's fourteen dollars. Like fourteen dollars. Oh my god. I'm like, <laughs> bitch. I just paid for all your other shit. <laughs> you dumb fuck. No. You should be like, you, it, cause here's the thing. You know what I learned at 19 years old when I was dating this Colombian girl named Michelle? I remember I, I made a big deal of buying something because I thought it was so expensive for myself. She said, either way, you're going to pay for it. So either make me feel good about it or make me, or, or you can make me feel bad about it. Bars. Bars. So what the fuck is the point of you complaining in front of me? <laughs> you make my pussy dry, motherfucker. Like... And those are the lessons that, you know, high school doesn't teach in fucking math class or fucking history talking about Abraham Lincoln getting shot in the head. You know, they don't teach those things. But I saw it on her face, and then I gave him a nudge, and he goes, I'm fucking with you. Uh, Great save. You know what? Great save. I bet you he dumped so many loads in her that night that... You know what? That, those are the things that make me happy. I have no idea why it makes me happy. It could be that I'm just a horny fuck. You started but, a family. But yeah, like literally that day, like premarital sex happened, and I was part of it. I'm also bleeding from my leg because I picked my scab. All right. Anyways, I got scratched there, and I really don't know why. I don't, oh, we'll bring that up later. Um, oh, my. So, boom. Guys, this is the largest venue I have ever performed in front of. 2,107 tickets were purchased at Mystic Lake Casino um, venue. It was, I was beyond nervous. And Gatsby, if we can run the clip of me walking on stage, and I'll yeah. send it to you. It's playing right I, now. I think I've said, all right. It's playing it's, right now. It's right, I'm ready. I'm prepping. I even bend my back. I, I do this little step back thing, and I go out, and I'm, I see the crowd, and I say, let's go, fucking baby, let's go. Look, right before that, I had a conversation with Jack, and Jack was just like, bring it, dude. You got to bring it. got to bring it. If you've never done comedy, if you've never done individual sports, individual sports, I say that because it's different. You're a wrestler, you're whatever it is, golfer, whatever. It's all, it's all on you. You either win or lose because of you, Right? These are the things um, that are incomparable to anything else. I used to wonder what Mike Tyson felt like or McGregor felt like. Gatsby loves it when I bring up McGregor. Absolutely. Because I bring him up all the time. Not for nothing, though. Not for nothing, no. There is this feeling that is so overwhelming that in, in the announcement, he says, this next comedian, winner of, you know, best comedian in Arizona, Eric Bernal. That announcement, walking out in the spotlight, there are 2,107 people looking at one thing, and it's you. And you either ignite or you fizzle at that, at that point. Look, I'm not one to two mile horn. But, motherfucker, I killed that shit, right? I murdered for a, a good half hour. Thank you to Tim Dillon. Gave me 25 minutes, but he said, in, in his own words, he goes, have fun. <laughs> have fun. Which I love. We did that. Tim Dillon went next. He fucking annihilated. I'm, when I talk about people gasping, you know, I once heard this quote, and it said, there's nothing like hurting and crying from stomach pains for all the good reasons. It's good. That's such a... Uh, I've read that quote many years ago, and I go, man, I apply it to comedy to this day. Um, there is levels to this shit, Gatsby. Absolutely. There is levels to it all. To sell 2,107 tickets in a place that... You know what? It isn't, you know, as Tim Dillon said, disgusting people. You know, these are disgusting people. No, they were great. Minnesota. And they DM me, dude. They DM me. I'm getting DMs nonstop. How many followers did you get over the week? I've gained 400 followers after the Tim Dillon fucking weekend. And mostly I has to be because of them, but also just like there's, their support is real. What I like about the average American, and I don't mean to say that in a bad way, you know, an average American... Um, is a hard worker, is looking to support their family, looking to support their kids, looking to support everything. So any type of levity or type of 
um, break from life is like greatly appreciated in a way that you can't imagine. We take for advantage that we have these large venues around us here in Phoenix, Arizona, Absolutely. fifth largest city in the country, right? Bigger than Miami, bigger than Vegas, bigger than Philly. We take for we take for granted where these people go like, thank you for coming. Like we can't even believe that you came out here. You know? So crazy. It's like seeing a movie. Dude, it is. And here's the thing, you know, I talked to Timmy about this and I and I call him Timmy because we're friends now. Um <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, he has what only half a million more followers than me. It's not that bad. Um, no, so I told him, he goes, Eric, you know, he's like comedy selling at all time high. And we, and I, you know, I'm a history buff, you know, so was he. And I said, you know, entertainment always booms when the world is lost. After the Great Depression, theater exploded what happens when the world is is rough imagine when you're sad and you go watch a movie by yourself you want to know why people do that they need an escape they need an escape from reality an escape of the kids driving them crazy their man or their girl or their job or whatever the escape of entertainment is like thank like there wasn't one person with their phone out Yes. 2,107 people. I don't know if it's because they weren't allowed to, <laughs> but I do want to say it's because that it's good to be lost in a trance. You ever have sex really good and you don't care if you're cheating? No, just kidding. Uh, no, what I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, have you ever had like a moment where you're like, I don't care that I have no service. Yeah. I don't care that I just lost a bunch of money. Being nonchalant, you know. I broke my phone in New York the first time I went Dude, out Dude, first of all, Gatsby, <laughs> if, there were, if there were a photo for fucking, for this, it'd be Gatsby the artist. The kid wakes up when the plane's supposed to take off. <laughs> when we're going to Chicago. I'm calling nonstop. I'm fucking blowing his phone up. I'm telling him that I'm gonna make the plane take a nosedive if he doesn't get here. What happens? By the grace of God, or whatever the natives believe in. Praise them. Um, the sun God, whatever, the moon, the stars. Creator. 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 All of a sudden, there's a half an hour delay on the flight. And he walks in going, huh, did everyone get here early? Making a joke about it. And I wanted to murder him. I've never seen you so Immediately. mad at me. I've never seen you so mad at me. And I said, we need to take a flight to Chicago. I don't know if you know that, but that's not in Awatuki. We're not going to Tucson. We're not going to Vegas. We're going to Chicago. <laughs> Chirac. But nonetheless, Timmy, again, what I learned so much is that um, your jokes really matter when they're presented in front of people that don't know you and didn't come to see you. Yes. That is the true... Honestly, any comic out there, you want to know if your shit's good? Don't say it to your fucking mom. She's going to laugh. She, You're her best. You're her be Not saying that that's not bad. Encouragement is great. But test your shit out in front of real people. Uh, David Blaine once said that you want to know why he pursued uh, magic? Which I think it's very sweet. It's very sweet what he said. His mother would over exaggerate her expressions about because there was books you could do uh, and do we can count cards and making a result happen. And her, her, his mom would be like, "Oh my God, you're the best, David." You know, it's sweet thinking about it now because that's what propelled him. Great, get that, have it propel you. But the true test is doing it in front of people who don't care who you are. In the words of I think I forgot who said, but. We don't know who ya, you know. Ain't nobody know who ya, you know. So, true test. You went to Grand Rapids after Minnesota. Okay, so let me tell you about this. Okay, let me tell you about fucking going to the airport in Minneapolis. <laughs> so Timmy is talking about the great Tim Dillon is talking about where he goes. Fuck, I forgot my sunglasses. But we're talking about it nonstop. We get there. We use clear to, to get into the airport. We all get in. It's fast. We're kind of there really early. Really? 
So yeah, we're there really early, and um, he hits up his, you know, uh, his assistant Travis. Shout out to Travis again. Um, hey, let's see if there's a lounge here. You know, he has access. Rich people have access to things. I didn't even know there's a lounge in airports like that. Um, let me tell you about this place. It's fucking huge. Okay, <laughs> it's fucking gigantic. So Travis finds it. We go. All right, it's the Delta Lounge. Beautiful. We go in. Tibby, you know, hands over his card, his pass. There's a whole thing that you got to go through. It's not like, oh, I'm here. I know someone. It's not Scottsdale nightclub. You know, no one's going to bring you to the front of the fucking line. It's you not a W. There. No, yeah, it's, not, it's not any of those things. He goes and he goes, oh, yeah, I just have, you know, my guests with me. And he's like, yeah, cool. They're like, yeah, it's $50 a person. He goes, what? <laughs> Why? Well, that's just what it is. You know, it's $50. And then he goes, you guys are criminals. <laughs> <laughs> he calls the agent a criminal, which I, which I adore and love about him. And he had mentioned, I'm not going to mention the dollar amount because that's too much inside baseball. But he goes, I spend X amount of money on this fucking card a month. I'm sure it's a and lot. he goes like this. Whatever. Put it on my card. I even told him, I said, hey, I'll wait outside. There was a Chili's that was serving breakfast. Never heard of it. Never heard of that happening. I was like, yeah, I'll go to the Chili's. He goes, no, Eric, you're going to come with us. <laughs> cool. We go in. He pays for it, and he goes, hey, Eric, do me a favor. Go fucking drink and eat everything you fucking want in here, okay? So we go. We go, we go in, and we're, and we're, and we're looking at stuff to eat. And he goes, what would it take for them to get some fucking locks? What would it take them to get some fucking, you know, a little, a little salmon, a little, fish, a little shrimp cock, a little shrimp cocktail, you know? He goes, these people, $50 for this? It's fucking ridiculous, you know? X amount of money. I order a babosa. I say, is it okay if I get a babosa? He goes, I don't care if you get it, you dump it out like this and go get another one. And he's like, fuck them. So then, as we're leaving, there's like a, there's like a donation box. No for like, way. for like, I don't know, like, whatever the, like some like cancer, something. As I look, as I looked him, there's like a donation box. He goes, huh. he takes out his phone, he records it, and he goes, all the Delta employees steal this money at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make you all aware, in front of the agent. Does he bat a fucking eye at them? Look, he could give a fuck. That is the status of giving a fuck. I want to give for any. He rec he literally recorded in front of the business after we had just had coffee, tea, crumpets, whatever the fuck. We had yogurt. And I mean, as we were eating it, he was like, yeah, this is not $50 worth, you know? So again, we need sunglasses, right? Timmy needs, Timmy needs sunglasses. We see a sunglass hut. He goes, he goes, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. We had time. We go. He comes out. I shit you fucking not with the biggest Versace glasses <laughs> you've ever seen in your life. Right? And they're, they're awesome looking, too. And he goes, it's funny how I complain about $50 for that. I just spent $500 on sunglasses. <laughs> You know, and it, and it was fun. And Tim is a guy who lives life. But I like the way he is. Like, just because you have money doesn't mean that you should be paying stupid money for simple shit. I believe right. in that completely as well. All right. On the way to Grand Rapids, what was funny about Grand Rapids is that him and his assistant both uh, flew first class. And then he told them, don't get used to it. Tell them that. Oh my God. Don't get used to it. And it was funny. It was. It's a very short... <laughs> It's a very short. It's a very short flight, and I just thought it was funny that he had to bring it up. Me, I was in, I, I was in aisle twenty nine or something, but I, always, I like it because Tim always made sure I had an aisle or a window seat. Very nice of him. No middle seat. I'm not a piece of trash, apparently, which is good. All right, we get to Grand Rapids. It's seventeen minutes to our hotel. I stay at the Hyatt. He stayed at the JW JW Marriott. Hey. I'm just the opener feature. Uh, I'm glad I, there was even a whatever. I try to get in, and I can't get in, dude. 
I can't get in the fucking the Hyatt. What happened? I walked around. I'm like, there must be another. It says like, try other entrance, dude. There was no other entrance. I'm already pissed because we had to wake up. I woke up at 7 a.m. At 8 a.m., Tim was like, hey, let's get ready to go to the airport. 8.30 a.m., we're in the car. 9 a.m., we're in the, you know, the airport. We didn't even fly out to like 11.30. And even Tim was like, hey, next time, let's just fucking sleep in a little more. Nonetheless, I went around, and they go, oh, they don't open the doors unless you ask to be buzzed in. What the fuck? I get in. I'm like, hey, Horace, I need a fucking room, okay? It's under this shit, whatever. Okay, here you go. We have breakfast between these hours. Let me suck my cock. Whatever. So I go in there. Dude, I pass out. So heavy that I wake up with the anxiety that I missed the show. <laughs> I I woke up like, because I had the mimosas. So I was, I was lit. I was turned. Right? And I was like, holy shit. I missed the fucking... Like, I was sweating and shit. You thought you missed everything. Oh, yeah. And the show's at 7, so it's early. I woke up at 5.40, 5.45. I go, shit, I need food. And I know that venue is like just a venue doesn't serve food. So I walk around. I find this fucking little Asian spot. They have a little miso soup. I said, let me get a miso soup and a Coca-Cola. She goes, weird combo, but I got you. That's perfect. Fuck it. Got that. Forgot that I don't have hair gel. Dude, my hair... Was like uh, this, and there was like, you know how you lay on your head so like at a certain point where it's like, yo, you need a cow to lick it, you know, like to you're go stuck down. on that side, dude. I was like, they're like, oh, you can go to the the Dollar Tree or whatever, or the uh the, something, the General Dollar. Okay, yeah, fine. I can't find the Dollar Tree. Really? Oh, it's right here. It's right there. What the? F- it's called GDX. What the fuck? GDX. And I asked him, like, hey, why are you guys called GDX? He's like, well, is that that, um, the the golden dollar, whatever the fuck it's called? It's just that, you know, it's kind of like, it's it's like low, you know, it seems like it's for low people. I'm like, yeah, I know, I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm I'm here because the shit's low, <laughs> okay? So I get the gel, get a, I get a nice Red Bull sugar-free, and uh, I go, and I take a shower. Oh, do I whack one out? Without a doubt, I rub one out. <laughs> Done. Makes me level headed, whatever. And I go look at the venue. It's, an, it's a nine minute walk. I'll walk that. The Easy fuck I need to buy? Yeah, what fuck I need to get, a, you know, get to see the city? I walk. There's homeless people, but they're polite, you know? Polite homeless people. I don't know what to tell you. They were just polite homeless people. <laughs> we went there, and then uh, I see the venue. I walk up and the guy has a my Instagram in his phone going, okay, we'll be waiting for you. Come in. Boom. And then Timmy came through like maybe five minutes later because we were trying to meet each other at the same time. Go up there. They have two, they have, bro, the dressing rooms at GLC Live in Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. Fucking gorgeous. I'm looking at the wall. Fucking Theo Vaughn. Tom Segura. Like, Big fucking heavy names, right? And then the guy goes, you need anything? I was like, can I get a Red Bull vodka? You know? You know that cool? He goes and gets it. And uh, I look at the crowd. Uh, it's like seven. It's like 6.50. It's supposed to start at 7, but only like 50% are seated. So the guy's like, hey, do you want to start at 7? And he goes, Eric, how much are seated? I'm like, 50%. He goes, nah, we'll wait. He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, yeah. He closes the door. Tippy's like, these fucking people, they don't want me to put on a good show or what? He goes, Eric, and this is what I appreciate about it, this headliner, Tim Dillon. He said, I want you to perform in front of a full crowd. Absolutely. You know? So we held it to about 7.30. Meanwhile, Red Bull and Vodka come in. <laughs> he comes in, he goes, hey, I got that thing for you in the other room. Even Tim is like, what? What the fuck is the thing? We walk out, he goes, I know Tim Dillon doesn't drink, so I got you. I grab the drink. I bring it right back into the room. I told Timmy, I said, hey. He says, you know, because you don't drink. He goes, do you know that my job is based upon people who drink? That's what I do. 
is literally performing. If people don't drink, Eric, I have no career. So, yeah, I can handle you fucking drinking that shit right in front of me. I'm okay. Whatever. All right. So I go downstairs. We start. I think I did a pretty good job. Murdered. Came out. I, you know, I introduced Tim. Tim comes up. He's murdering. I have to go. I want to sit down and watch the show. And they go, hey, you need security with you if you're going to sit down. Really? So I'm sitting on the floor. They bring out a chair for me, put it down, and have this huge white man. I mean, this guy looks like he hits his kids, his wife. He kids, like, this guy is strong as shit. Like, I was scared, but super sweet guy. So he was like, yeah, I just got to be with you. So I'm sitting watching, right? So if I'm watching this way, there's crowd right here watching the same way. But I'm kind of tilted this way. People were like, hey, really loved your set. <laughs> this fucking guy goes right in front of them. He goes, watch the show. Like, watch the show. And I said, no, 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 dude. You don't need to do that. Like, He was like, no, no, I just don't want no people bothering you. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll let you know if people are bothering me. Whatever. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, Eric Bernal Comedy, Instagram. Hit me up. So I go, you know what? I want to fucking drink. I'm going to go to the bar. Yeah. So I get up. As soon as I get up, I noticed that a girl had calculated me getting up to. She's walking. She, she meets me. And she goes... Hey, um, you think I can uh, buy you a drink? You know, whatever. Nice. We're gonna, we're gonna say it's Becky's. Um, so she went up there to the bar, and I ordered my own self something too, because I love a good gin and tonic, Hendrix with a lime. If anyone sees me out, Hendrix with a lime. I'm an old That's white woman. Yeah, I just love it. That's the only Henny I drink. So. <laughs> So she she buys me whatever. Oh yeah, whatever. And then she goes, after we're done, she goes, So here's my situation. And there's only two people I've ever heard say that. Her and Enrique Iglesias. Okay? <laughs> here's my situation. Been to every nation. But something, something, something with matter like you. All right. They're the only people I've ever heard say that. She was the second one. So she goes, here's my situation. I was like intrigued because I was lit. And I was like, yeah. She's like, so my friend is here with her husband. They had a baby like four months ago. It's like the first time they're going out, blah, blah, blah. They set me up with a guy, but I'm not feeling him. Whore, right? No, no, no. Uh, Shooter's going to shoot. So, she, I mean, she literally said, this is me shooting my shot. And she's like gorgeous. I'm like, I'm a blob of a man, you know? So... So I'm like, all right. I was like, that's hilarious, you know. She's like, yeah, you know. He's like, they want me to have sex with him. She was like, it's never gonna. I would never have sex with that guy. Whatever. So you know, as a gentleman, I gave her my number. You know, I gave her my number. And then she didn't call me. And then she was just like, I was like, how do I know if you're gonna hit me up later? She was like, well, I guess you'll see. I was like, fair enough, Grand Rapid bitch. You know what I mean? Real <laughs> GRB, uh, Grand yeah. Rapid bitch. And so, anyways, after the show, look, the good thing about Tim Dillon is that he always likes to take people out for dinner, you know. We go to Roof Chris. This Roof Chris was, wasn't the best. I mean, even Tim was like, with $2,000, I can make this whole place look better. You know. The food, I mean, we didn't even eat all our food. It wasn't that great. The girl hits me up. Nice. All right. Hey, what's up? Whatever your name is. Hey, I'm at this bar called Flanagan's. So, shout out to Grand Rapids and Flanagan's. Yeah, I made my night. Anyways, me and Tim wrap it up. I thank him for the weekend like a hundred times over because honestly, aside from this part when I'm when I'm a slut too, um, it was honestly the best experience of my comedic comedic com comedy life. It was like nothing. Look, very few people in this world will feel what I felt that weekend. And it's not a bad thing. I want people to feel it in their own special way, what I felt, right? It was like it was like being a fat white woman being with a really hot black guy. I couldn't believe it was happening. You know what oh. I mean? You know, and it and it, and I can't couldn't believe I could stick the whole thing in. So 
look, these are real things. And also, this is a comedy podcast. Hope you guys know that. And if look, here's the thing. I don't care if you don't like this shit. I'm out to a point where it's like, look, I'm an idiot. So are you. So is your baby daddy. So is your baby mama. So is your mom. So is your dad. If they were in your life, cool. Lucky. But I just don't care. Long story short, I go to the fucking Flanagan's. I go in. They go, it's a $5 charge, cover charge. I'm like, all right. And they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just open for Tim Dillon? They go, yeah. He goes, five dollars on us. I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> we got you, bro. Thank you for the 500 Abraham Lincoln pennies that you saved me. But nonetheless, hey, if I don't got to pay, great. Go in, and it's the girl, her friend, her husband, and the guy she's setting her up with, right? I go, and I'm. And it feels weird now because I'm like, Dude, am I going to have to steal your chick? Because, like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm only in town for the night. You know what I mean? Like, I hope you understand this. So we're drinking, and I sat next to him, the guy that she's supposed to be with, and I kind of let her sit to herself because I just, I just felt rude, dude. I have a conscience sometimes, you know? And it just didn't feel good. We started drinking. I bought them around because it was like a dollar fucking beer over there. Whatever, and uh, they leave. And I go, fuck, she left. What are you gonna do? People leave. She comes back, and I was like, whoa, what are you doing? She was like, yeah, I'm not sleeping in the bed with that guy. How far is your hotel from here? <laughs> yeah, let me tell you. I'm not saying that we did anything, but allegedly, she had a good time. Okay? What I'm saying is that the Hyatt at the Grand Rapids was very nice to us. It was coffee, it was orange juice. A little bit of everything. And she said the funniest thing that I wish I made up myself. Mm -hmm. I said bye to her in the morning. She said, wow, for the first comedy show, (laughs) what a better souvenir than a comedian. You're a piece of meat. I felt like a whore. (laughs) And I loved it. No, so... (sighs) Look, all in all, I know that was a long form of the weekend, but this is a podcast, so suck my fucking butthole if you don't like that story, because that shit was amazing. Tim Dillon Weekend. Tim Dillon Weekend, TDW, you know, it is, without a doubt, the best time I ever had. It was the best I ever had. Shout out to Drake. And it was just... An amazing thing, man. I I loved I loved knowing that my jump shot worked outside the my local gym. Outside your local LA fitness. You know what I mean? We're at 47 Cool. No, I'm good. But let's get to some other stuff because I had someone break into my house. All right. So whole other thing. Break in. Breaking news. Um Look, I went out the other week with a friend and a young lady who I have relations with. Look, they didn't like it or didn't like that. She didn't know where I was. Whatever. Went into my home, um, cut up clothes that I was supposed to wear for the Tim Dillon weekend. Stole my laptop, passport, some memorabilia, and stuck a knife in my wall. So you can tell that she really loves me. Um... Here's the thing about break-ins that's hilarious. Um, As a dude, you still feel bad for the woman. And I think that's just maybe just put into our DNA. Because we want, even, even at our most hurt, we still don't want you hurt. Which is crazy, right? It is, it is, it is weird. But at the fucking drop of a dime, if there's an opportunity to hurt us, it is almost accessed every single time. And I feel it's because maybe they know that we can handle it. Nonetheless, I wanted to call the police. I wouldn't do many things, but I just wanted to ask, what made you think that you could do that to me? I wanted to be more funnier with this part. 
But it was more hurtful than anything else because to invade someone's private space is awful, right? And if roles were reversed, I would be in prison today. I'd be in jail. I'd have people tell me that I'm a piece of shit of a man, that I'm this and that, right? For those reasons, I don't, I don't name this person. I will never do that. It's not, it's not me. It's not who I am. But if you guys do pay enough, I will tell you the name. But um, <laughs> for the Patreon, for the Patreon. No, dude. It's just I woke up. Don't get me wrong. Kudos to her. It was a great job of of fucking up my life. A lot of things have happened. I've had my first floor of my home flooded. Right? Hey, that's not her fault. Fine. My car was vandalized. Broken taillights, headlights, whatever. And I know it wasn't her because the way it happened. You know. And then that. This is all before the huge weekend I just told you about. It is very important to understand how to deal with shit. You can't be a kid forever who throws himself on the floor and attempts to fucking make a mockery of you, embarrass you. There's a time that you must grow from that. Which I don't. I just don't. I just... There's enough shit going on, dude. Dude, I'm trying to follow my dream. This podcast is me following my dream, by the way. I want to I want to be funny to you, too. But this is me following my dream. This is me, Gatsby, meeting him in the fucking middle of the night, telling him to fucking take a chance on me, that we're going to do something. And tomorrow we fly out to Dallas, and we're going to be with Neil Nanda and Ralph Barbosa, people who are fucking killing the game in the comedy world. Tim Dillon, Chris Stefano, Giannis Papas, Paris Sachet, you know, Natalie Cuomo, all these people. It doesn't matter. I think... These things, when you if you ever do these things to be hurtful on purpose, I think I, even though it was done to me, I still feel worse for you. Because the only way that you can reciprocate, the only way you can handle things is to hurt. I do comedy because I was hurt. I do this because of it. I do this so I don't slit my own fucking wrist and throat and everything else. I do that because I don't ever want to be put into a situation where I feel like I could punch a girl's head in. Because I just don't want to do that. It's not good for the YouTube algorithm, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not good for that. It's not good publicity. What I'm saying is those clothes could be rebought. The garbage could be cleaned up. My things can be replaced. But what a person does to you, hey, it leaves a mark. All pain scars. And they're there to remind you of it being there prior, right? So, nonetheless, I wanted to be extra funny with this. But, you know, I just had sex with her. So, um, no. uh, Yeah, no, I had to pound it out. No. I had to bust the fucking dust out that pussy. Um, are we past five minutes? No, we're good. We can say pussy now. Uh, yeah, we're good. But that's what's been happening. It's been crazy. I think it was great that my my house got flooded. Had to rip all my floors out. Um, car got vandalized. You know, little Beamer. I mean, broke everything. I pay on. I am self employed. I do comedy. I pay. Gatsby, for every flyer I do, for things that we do, we're now sponsored. And that is the reason why you can't be upset when shit goes bad. When shit goes bad, I was once told this, honestly. I was once told this, and this is like one of some of the best advice I've ever been given. Nothing lasts forever. When it's bad, don't worry about it because it won't last forever. And when it's good, understand that you cherish it because nothing lasts forever. It is on the other side of the bed waiting for you to wake up. So that's cool. Shit happens bad. You being upset, complain, yelling, doing all this shit, causing a fucking fuss is not going to fix a goddamn thing. It's not. It will never fix anything. If I complain for every comedy spot I never got, for every gig I wish I was paid for, for people that forgot to pay me or just didn't pay me, it would harbor some energy in me that wouldn't you know, um, be received on the outside when I when I perform. That's the thing, dude. It's just that you can't go through life blaming an event. 
oh, my fucking whatever did this to me. Okay, what else are you going to do? And I will always repeat this line that my mom said. Somebody out there has it worse than you, and they will make it further than you. So what the fuck is your excuse? I used to complain being poor when I was a kid. Guess what? Okay. I can complain or do something about it. So that's really what it is. Yeah, cut up my shirts. I'll reorder it again. Whatever. Shout out to Passion Nova. You know. But it is important to the people who do do these things to you to correct them. Because if you don't, they'll just do it forever. And they won't stop. So someone mispays you, doesn't do something in your work, in your life, whatever it is, take note of it. But if you keep letting it happen, then that's on you. I won't let shit happen to me like that again. These, This person knows. You know what I mean? This person knows. That's why she shaved for me tonight. No, just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> bring it home. We'll bring it home. Bring it home. No. Yeah, let's land, let's land this, baby. Uh, but all in all, dude, it's just here's the thing. All these things happen leading up to the best weekend of my life. I want you to understand yes. that. I'm a homeowner. My shit was flooded. Everything has to be replaced. I had to come out thousands of dollars to fix a plumber, right? My car was vandalized. Fucking broken into pieces. They're fixing it, whatever. Girl cut up my clothes, stuck a knife in the wall. It happens. But if I were to let it break me, I would have never had the best weekend of my life. Don't let shit that happens to you be the thing that happens to you. You know, like, it, it, it'll be an ongoing thing where you just... You ever hear these people who just always have a reason why their life sucks? But they never have a solution. You'll tell them and they go like, no, 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 my uncle molested me. You know, who uncle has it? Okay? <laughs> Whose uncle has it? As the great Miss Pat once said, if you've never had a, if you, if a guy has never been knuckled deep in your butthole, then you haven't even lived yet. Okay. <laughs> this has been the Eric Renault show. <laughs> Hope you guys had a good one. Go fuck yourself. And why the A Z is S V O? Jokes aside, the realest when you hear it coming from the Eric Bernard show is Scottsdale. Very young, get your phone and hear a call. We going up now, let them know. S V O, Sleepy Hollows, very young.